Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado. And today I have the 2023 SX Prestige plug-in hybrid Sorento in black with gray interior. This is an amazing vehicle, especially for the fact that it is a plug-in hybrid. So you get uh, a 34 approximately uh, kilowatt uh, full electric range battery so you can go about 34 miles uh, for one uh, session for one for one complete charge and then it also has the hybrid uh, technology as a backup and then gas as a backup for that so it is definitely an amazingly efficient vehicle and today I'm going to show you uh, kind of all the bells and whistles the everyday features that the average person would want to know about it uh, if you haven't liked and subscribed already, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Uh, it does help me with the content and uh, it is actually something that is, is pretty fun for me to do. I just started my own merch store, so if you're into like mugs that say Sorrento on it, t-shirts, tote bags, uh, I, I'm getting involved with, uh, with some just generic Kia merchandise, which is really cool, which actually looks really cool because I'm a fan of of that so just check out my merch store the link is going to be in the description and then i'm also going to try and put some links for accessories as well because i know those are pretty popular when it comes to weather mats and things like that so right away let's take a look at the daytime running lights i really do like the uh the daytime running lights on this vehicle i like daytime running lights on pretty much every vehicle uh, but these ones are really really cool you have the led headlights as well as it blends into this tiger nose grill here across the front with the signature Kia script badging right there. You do see the front facing camera and then you see the sensor plate down below down there. You can see where the sensors are right there in the bumper and then they kind of go along there to the side. And I like that the Kia has removed the badging on the hoods. Uh, you know, they no longer have the badging right on the hood that, you know, say Telluride, say Sorrento, that kind of thing. Uh, they've gone to uh, just having that signature script badging right there. Uh, this guy is going to be on 19 inch tires, which is pretty cool. Uh, it does sit uh, fairly high up and I really do like what uh, Kia is doing with the wheels. Now this is a hybrid model, so you kind of do see this kind of metallic, plasticky chrome right there. Uh, and then with the chrome inlays along the, uh, the door seals. You do have your solid black caps on this model, which I really do enjoy. And I don't know if you can tell, but the car just went into hybrid mode because the engine just went quiet. Uh, so that's uh, kind of cool. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that here going forward. Uh, you do have these really cool body lines that go down the, the side of the vehicle. And then you have uh, here in the black that kind of chrome uh, lay down there at the bottom. One of my favorite features of any Kia is the button here on the door handle. If you press it once, it's going to lock uh, the door. If you press it, you know, once and the doors are locked, it's going to unlock the door. Double press and then it can lock all four doors or unlock all four doors, which is pretty, pretty cool. Especially here in Colorado, I usually keep my keys in my jacket or in my pocket. I don't have to take them out all the time. You do have your gas cap here on the left hand side of the vehicle uh, and it is body color. Uh, you actually open that with a button on the inside of the cabin, which I will show you here in a moment. Coming along the back, you have Kia's signature script badging right there. Uh, PHEV right there on the right hand side badge, so you know it's a plug-in hybrid. Then you have your reflector lights down there along the rear diffuser and then you have your rear lamps along the back. Let's see if I could show you here the camera right there underneath Kia and then it does have an automatic lift gate but to open it automatically you can also press it right down here and then the rear lift will open. So plug-in hybrid, like I was saying, so you do get a couple of cool little things here with that. You have your charger, which is not bad. I actually prefer one from Amazon, which I like really, really well, which I'll show you guys how that works. Um, 
but uh, the one that comes with Kia is not horrible. This one here comes with the carpeted floor mats, the little mesh net, the little cargo tray. I think those are crossbars in that big box right there. Uh, underneath here is the third row, which is gonna be hard to show you guys here with all these uh, accessories still on the packaging, but a full-size adult can fit in the third row and it lifts up just like any other Sorento or Telluride. You do have your buttons here on the right-hand side that can lower those second row captain's chairs down, which is pretty cool. So you have plenty of cargo space. You also have a 12 volt uh, right there if you're going camping, things like that. And then I'm just gonna show you here the little seatbelt hooks. You can put your seatbelt hooks in right there. That way when you're driving around with the third row down, it's not all rattly. All kinds of accessories you can get for this guy, like I was saying. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can just open up the bottom right here. You can kind of see where the jack kit is and then where the hybrid battery sits as well, or well, the, the battery. Um, all in all, pretty standard. If you're familiar with the gas version of the Sorento, it's the same exact thing. Uh, when it comes to cargo space, uh, but it is the benefit of the hybrid. Up here, you do have your um, push to close buttons that close it automatically. You can just close it or you can close it and lock it with the other one. And down she goes. All right, so coming along here to the right hand side, this is where it gets a little different because you have your hybrid charging. So that is your plug. As you can see, it's super easy. The little thingy here is on a little string, so it's not gonna move around on you too much. And when you're done, you just put it back right there. Now, two ways you can charge it. I showed you guys the level one charger that it comes with, but if you are so inclined to get a level two charger, you're probably gonna go with something like this, like with the charge point charger here on this wall. Um, there, there's many, many versions that you can get of this, but this is just a level two. It's super easy. All you do is unplug it, you, and then you have the little charger there. So not horrible. I'll put a, a, a link in the description below if you wanted to purchase one, or if you're curious about them, you can research them. Uh, but that is a level two charger, and I will show you charging times here when we get into the interior features of the vehicle. But all in all, that is the exterior of the Sorento plug-in hybrid. I'm gonna go ahead and close this guy up again, and then we're gonna move on to the interior features. Let me just hop into the second row here. So hopping into the second row, like I said, this is the gray interior package. So you can see plenty of leg room here. You have armrest on the captain's chairs that go right here. You have a physical button right there, and you also have a physical button down there. And if you press them, then it'll slide forward and then you can go ahead and jump into the third row. So if you're a full size adult like myself, uh, that is gonna be the best way that you can do that. And then let's see if I can close that one handedly and I can. Um, fully functional seats. And by that, what I mean is you do have a bar underneath right down there and that bar underneath, again, let's see if I can do that one handedly, can scoot that guy all the way back which is pretty cool. On the SX Prestige Hybrid Sorento, you also do get heated seats in the second row. You also do get this nifty little sunshade right there. Uh, so, you know, it works really well if all the windows are tinted. Uh, they do come with some factory tint, but I recommend matching all around, uh, but that's just me. You get the Bose audio system, which I can't really uh, demonstrate here, or YouTube's going to uh, like censor me. So Bose audio right there. Hopping into the second row, plenty of leg room, as you can see, and this uh, seat right there is kind of pushed all the way back as far as she'll go, so not bad at all. You do have USB charging ports uh, in the seats right there for your second row passengers. You have your air vents, you have your um, 12 volt, another USB port, and then you have your standard outlet right there. 120 I'm sorry 110 well, 115 actually uh, not really an expert when it comes to that kind of stuff uh, mat pockets uh, on the backs of your seats there and this seating material is very solid like it's very soft it's a nice soft leather which I really do like and um, 
very, very comfortable. I mean, you can see my leg room here on a long trip. This would be uh, pretty ideal. You do have your kind of oh crap handles right here to help you get in and out. You do have a little garment hook here and then you also have a little light, which is kind of cool. The reason the lights are right there is because you have this really big, gigantic panoramic sunroof that goes all the way back to your third row, uh, which I'll demonstrate here in just a little bit. Give you just an interior shot there of the cabin. And you can hear the car kind of going from hybrid to gas. It's because I have the air conditioner going. It's super hot here in Colorado today. So you're gonna, you're gonna feel and hear that too. All right, so let's get into the front of the car where you're gonna spend a lot of your time if you're the driver and we'll go over that. There goes the ambulance. Okay, so well, let's just get some housekeeping out of the way here. So again, Aurora Black, this is the 2023 SX Prestige plug-in hybrid Sorento. Uh, we do sell at MSRP, so if I could help you find a vehicle, uh, that's something I can do. Uh, we sell Telluride, VV6s, Sorentos, plug-in hybrid Sportages, I mean, whatever. We're all about MSRP because honestly, the market doesn't really justify added tags right now anymore. Uh, we used to have added tags, but not anymore because again, it's just the market's not there. So miles per gallon. So if you have a uh, full tank of gas and a full tank of electricity, uh, you're going to get about 79 miles uh, per gallon combined city and highway. Gas only is going to be about 34, so not too shabby. It's rated a 9 out of 10 on the MPG scale. And this vehicle has an MSRP of 51,975. It's a 1.6 turbo GDI plug-in hybrid sportage uh, with 261 horsepower, all wheel drive, um, blah, blah, blah. So not horrible. Let's go in and let's take a look at the inside of the car. Um, right away, something everyone always asks for is memory seating. You do have memory seating on this vehicle for two different people. You have your uh, lock and unlock, your uh, window controls, your child locks. That's a common question. I've had a lot of people be like, hey, I can't get my, my child locks off. Where's the button? It's actually right there. A lot of people are still looking in here for child locks, but that is not the case. The child locks are right there. Um, I'll show you a little trick with the mirrors here in just a second. Uh, but this guy does have blind spot detection. So if you can see the little triangle with the exclamation point right there you can kind of see that right there so that is your blind spot detection if uh, someone's in your blind spot it'll highlight uh red and if you are if someone's in your blind spot and you have your turn signal on it'll also beep at you as well this guy does have the sorrento door seal right there which is really cool and then you have your power seating so not only can you go forward backward up and down lumbar all that jazz this little button right here is going to be your thigh extender so you have your thigh extender there, which a lot of tall people uh, ask me about. So not too shabby. All right, let's get into the car. Whew. It's actually a little cold in here now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that climate down. Okay, so I'm gonna push me back just a bit. Okay. Um, left to right, you have your illumination button right here. That's going to illuminate your center screens, both the one in front of you and your infotainment screen. You have your lane keep assist, traction control. You can open and close the back hatch and your gas tank release right there. Um, I told you I'd show you something with the mirrors. Let's see if this has it. So there's your mirror. Here's your mirror controls, which you can fold them in by pressing that button mirrors are folded in but what you can do in this vehicle since you have these little toggle switches here if I'm going to press it all the way to the left and I'm going to put it in reverse yep I have tilting mirrors for a curb uh, for curb view so that's kind of cool now that only works when you have the toggle switch either to the left or the right if you have the toggle switch neutral and I go into reverse nothing happens. So you do have to have that toggle switch again, all the way to the left or the right for that to work. 
All right, let's move right along, trying to make good time here. Uh, we have your auto lights right there, which I'm a huge fan of. That way your lights turn on and off and go, uh, you know, as the sun goes up and down. So that's pretty cool. You have your pedal shifters right here for sport mode. You have one on each side. Uh, that way you can go up and down the gears in sport mode in this car. You Those do not control regenerative braking like in the EVs. So these are just sport mode pa pedals. And then here you have your um, controls for your windshield wipers. You also have the rear windshield wiper control here that you would turn up and down. Um, let's take a look at this LCD screen, which is pretty cool. So right now we are in EV mode. So we are using the electric battery, uh, HEV. And then over there it tells you kind of like hybrid mode. So that's what HEV means. So but as you can tell, the car is really quiet right now. The engine is not on we are in hybrid mode coming here left to right on the steering wheel you have your voice assistant not only for kia if you press it once you're going to get the little kia guy it's a little cumbersome at first i'm not gonna lie but uh the more you use it the more it will sorry lower your voice i didn't understand you yeah it's gonna say that a lot um your mode here right now you click your mode, you're going to cycle through your different radios. So you can go ahead and click, like if you do your Bluetooth phone and let's say FM um, or and then Sirius, you can select which sounds or which music options you want to cycle through by pressing mode. You have your answer call, decline a call. You have your volume up and your tuner up and down. So that's how you just control your radio all right there. On the right hand side, you have your two pages button, which I think is very important and under explained. If I press this two pager button and then I have my toggle switch underneath, two pages will take me left to right through your menu. And you can see you have a lot of different options. I mean, you have your compass, you have your electric range right now. I wanted to do a video of this car before it was sold and so they did not put it on the charger yet. So as of right now, it has zero miles of electric range. Um, but it's really just running on the hybrid right now. Now the toggle switch, you can go up and down. So you can get a little uh, animation of how you're using your energy. You can have your driving info. You can do your accumulated info and then your attention level and then your tire pressure and then your different drive mode. I actually do like this screen on my vehicle. It's your tire power distribution. It shows you which wheels and which tires are, are active. And then you can add and delete content by going into that button there. Uh, so good point. I'm going to go ahead and click that because a lot of people ask me, where do I get certain settings? And it's going to be, be if, if you're not seeing the same settings I'm showing you, it's because you do not have them added. So you would be able to do that right there. You can add and delete things here that you do not want. So now the gas engine is kicked on. So you can see the gas engine is actually powering the battery. So you can see in the little animation, the gas engine is powering the battery, which um, until I owned a plug-in hybrid vehicle, I did not realize the gas engine will trickle charge the EV battery for efficiency. So, I mean, I'm by no means an expert, but it's definitely a lifestyle change when you start getting into one of these vehicles. One thing I wanna show you is the turn signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the turn signal on. I have blind spot monitoring view that shows up in the little circles here. So those are cameras in real time, which are pretty cool. And uh, that's just something that's a very popular feature on a vehicle like this. Okay, let's go over here to your infotainment system. So, oh, well, let's talk cruise control. So you do have cruise control as well, which you would press by that button there. I can't demonstrate it well uh, parked, obviously, but you do have adaptive cruise control here. So you can set car lengths, you know, one, two, three, or four car lengths ahead of you. So let's say you set your cruise control for 80 miles an hour, and then uh, you set three car lengths. Uh, you will do 80 miles an hour unless a car gets in front of you, and then you will stay that car link selection back for whatever you describe. So uh, pretty cool. I'm not a cruise control guy myself, uh, but it's uh, definitely handy. I've, I've used it a couple of times and my wife seems to love it. Uh, you do have your um, lane forward assist. I don't know if you noticed, but now that I press that button, that little uh, steering wheel is up there. What that's gonna do, it's gonna use the information from the radar up there and the, the sensors and all that jazz to um, keep you centered in the lane. 
Well, while I have the camera pointed on the mirror, underneath you do have your garage door openers. So you have your garage door openers underneath there uh, or your electronic gate openers or whatever you wanna do. You do have three options there. So you can do three different vehicles. Okay, now I think we're ready to move on to um, this guy. So complete touchscreen, like I was saying. So you just swipe it towards the driver and you could maneuver uh, through this infotainment screen. Uh, or I don't know if you could see the little inlay of the map right there or where it says media. If you press the button, it'll take you to... Oh, let's turn that down because I don't want to get copywritten. Um, so yeah, pretty easy. Touch the little map, you'll go into the map. Um, the little house takes you home, as I like to say. So the little house will take you back uh, into the main screen. So uh, I'm not gonna hit all these buttons, but let's walk through a couple of the important ones. The hybrid screen button, super easy. It tells you your electric range, your energy information. Um, you have um, charging management, eco driving. So let's just click energy information real quick. So here, this is a good little screenshot of how long it's gonna take you to charge this car. So on an AC 240, so a level two, like I showed you on the wall over there, It'll take about four hours and 25 minutes to give to me 100%. Uh, a level one charger, so that's plugging this car into any wall outlet, it's gonna take about 11 hours and 30 minutes. So, an overnight charge. So if you have, and my wife is this way with her plug-in hybrid, so if you work from home or you have a very small commute, if you just go run around your town a little bit, and you, you have a 35 mile range approximately to get your, your errands done or get you to work and back, you can always be on EV mode. So, I mean, you wouldn't be using very much gas. Um, there are times where my wife is getting 157 miles a gallon uh, because she's staying on EV for a couple of weeks until she ventures out into the, into the world more. Um, so you can make it a game. It's super efficient that way. It's a great way to fight range anxiety to where, you know, maybe you don't want a full electric vehicle because you're afraid of running out of electricity and the hassle of plugging it in places. If you're just going to plug it in at night and get, you know, a, a night's charge to get you 100% with a gas backup, I mean, these are definitely the way to go. Um, charging times may vary depending upon charging conditions. I like to say that not all charges are created equal. I'm gonna level with you. The one that comes with the Kias, they're not that great. Uh, it may take a little bit longer than the uh, 11 hours and 20 minutes I've noticed. I bought a really cool one from Amazon, which I'll put in the in the link below, that um, is cuts that, town, that time down significantly. Um, I mean, to eight hours basically is what my wife's been averaging. So, I mean, not all charges are created equal. Electricity, oh man, it, I mean, that's a whole other video, but I just wanted to point that out. Uh, let's go back a step here. So eco driving, it's going to kind of tell you just like a history of the econ of the fuel economy. Kind of tells me your miles here and how how long they were, how much they were getting. Um, it just depends upon what you were doing and how you're blowing the air conditioner and all that kind of stuff. Charge management, you can set departure time and charging schedules. Charging current is an interesting one. Um, you can set how much current the car is trying to accept from. A, a charger. So for example, uh, there's a gambling town here called Cripple Creek in Colorado that I like a lot. There is one charger in Cripple Creek that if I keep my car on maximum, it will trip the charger every time just because that charger I'm, I'm expect I'm thinking is old or I, I don't know, but my car is asking for way more power than that charger can provide. So I usually go into reduced. So into reduced, it even says, if a problem occurs while charging, lower the charging current and try again. When the charging current is lowered, charging may take longer, but you're not gonna trip that charger. So if you're having problems charging at home, if you're having problems with a charger in your area, try managing the charging current because that, again, not all charges are created equal. EV range again, um, if you were to click this button and you had a full tank or half a tank, it'll give you that, that circle would be bigger, that radius would be bigger, and it'll tell you what charging stations are in your range. So right now, there's about three in the range. If I had 35 miles of charge, it can get me into one of those three. But again, uh, time constraints of, and I had to do this video now, um, or else I wouldn't be able to do it. So that's kind of the, the charging screen. Map, 
kind of self-explanatory. You can do your little uh, search bar right there by just typing in where you want to go. Uh, you can also hit this little guy on the steering wheel as well while you're driving to get you directions. You have all your different little navigation volumes over here. You can go zoom in and out. Uh, all that good stuff and what I like on this screen and there's a couple other screens where it does it too if you have this little white triangle on the right you can make a third box appear so you have two boxes here one box is here I would call this a tri screen so you can keep your charging situation right there your time compass calendar passenger talk which is really cool so you can press passenger talk and it will activate the walkie-talkie in the car so um, well, the, the speakers. So now I can talk normally and my voice is being projected through the speakers to the rear of the car. So it's a way to yell at people in the back without having to yell at people in the back. So you can uh, put that on there, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to go back here to uh, this guy. So this will tell you nearby charging stations also. So if you click on that uh, and you go search stations, it'll tell you where the stations are not only that, but what they are, like DC fast charger, AC charging. Um, it will only show you stations that you can charge at, which is kind of cool. So you can't do level three DC fast charging in this car, but DC fast charging, um, this one here is DC AC. So they have an AC charger there, but it will only show you chargers that you can actually go on, which is really cool. And if you have stuff in your navigation that you are that you are using, let's say you have a route you've planned, these little guys that are highlighted, are, are not highlighted right now, they will highlight. So you can click along route, find charging stations along route, or just near your destination or near center of map. So that's gonna be you. You can also favorite stations as well. So let's go like to this one here. If, I, if you click on it, it's gonna show you where it is. It's gonna have little info on there. It's gonna show you how to get there. And then if you click this little info guy right there, it's gonna show you how many charges are there and allow you to set a destination uh, or mark it as a favorite over there. So it also tell you the company, ChargePoint. So ChargePoint's a fairly popular company for level two chargers. Um, so you're probably gonna see a lot of them as well. A little arrow takes you back, a little house takes you home. So that's just map. Navigation men menu is kind of useful, especially if you travel. I strongly recommend putting your work, I'm sorry, your home address or your work address right there. That way, if let's say you go to a town you're not familiar with, but you do know how to get home, but you just don't know how to get to the highway to get you home, that's what I use it for. And then I just click home, gets me to the highway, then I turn it off because now I know where I'm going. So super useful, like in for instances like that. But also you have P, uh, POI categories here. So you have charging stations, fast food, restaurants, convenience stores, cafes, banks, hotels, all that kind of stuff. So you can just click on one of them and then it will tell you where the closest ones are. Uh, and then you can also set them as destinations. So pretty useful. Little arrow takes you back, little house takes you home. Uh, phone, you can connect Bluetooth uh, to this guy. So Bluetooth is super useful. Phone projection is Apple CarPlay. Uh, or Android Auto with an approved USB cable. I actually do partner with a company that does wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Uh, it also can turn this screen into like a viewing screen for Netflix and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus and stuff. Um, it's super useful. I'll put a I'll put a video at the end of this video that's a little commercial for it basically. And if you click the link, you can get a fifty dollar discount. Um, if you buy through my link, but it's super cool. Like when my daughter plays sports, I'll sit here and I'll just watch you, uh, Netflix, uh, just right on my screen. And also it gives me wireless Apple CarPlay by just plugging the little box into the USB port right there. I, I've had a 99% success rate. Um, it uses Bluetooth and it uses, um, wireless hotspot for your phone. Super easy to use, but it gives you wireless Apple CarPlay. Voice memos, cli uh, climate, valet mode, passenger talk, we kind of already covered. Quiet mode is kind of cool. I can't really demonstrate it again because of YouTube copyright, but if you uh, turn the radio up and you like to listen to it super loud, and then you have people sleeping in the back, you can click quiet mode. And when quiet mode is selected, all radio and media played are only in the front seats. Volumes automatically lowered in the rear seats. So that way you don't disturb the people trying to sleep back there. Uh, set up radio media, Kia Connect, notifications, and user's manual. Let's go into Kia Connect. 
Kia Connect is actually super important. It is our app. You do get it free for the first year. You can do remote start, remote climate, uh, vehicle locate, uh, super, super useful. Um, I've had people get divorced because of vehicle locate at my dealership. So um, <laughs> you could, this car can be tracked. Make sure you know that if you're in a relationship. Um, roadside assistance, which is kind of cool. So when your phone is paired, it'll uh, connect to roadside assistance and transmit your information, which is pretty neat. You don't have to memorize or keep roadside information with you. You also have the button up here for roadside assistance as well. And then the button here to, to talk to Kia Connect. Uh, but super important here, all you do, your salesperson should be doing this for you when you buy the car. You click into Kia Connect, click activate service, it's going to give you terms and conditions, uh, so I would just say agree and click next. Uh, and then you just enter your phone number there, uh, type it in, do 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 do, click OK. It's going to send you a link. Uh, fill out the information on the link uh, with your password and um, your username. Typically, it's going to be your phone number and the password you create. Then it's going to send you a, a little code. You punch the code in right here, uh, right there, enter code, click submit it's then you're gonna have the app so super easy to follow it takes a minute and a half to do depending on how fast you can create a password and then uh, you can have that free for the first year 911 connect super cool as well uh, if you are in an accident uh, and the airbags deploy the car will call 911 for you um, and give them your location in some situations as well as long as the the main computer is not severely damaged not a hundred percent technology obviously but super super cool uh, I'm just trying to scoot along here for time. I feel like there's one more thing I wanted to talk about and that's going to be set up. Set up, there's a lot of information here in set up. Uh, you can spend an hour and a half customizing this car exactly how you want it. I would always recommend clicking user profile first. Set up a user profile. Uh, you can do your driver name. You can select a different image that you can have right here from 11 different images to choose from. You can link your Kia Connect account. Uh, and then you can have different driver profiles. It'll save things like climate, radio, um, pictures, all that kind of stuff. So you can have that different, different profile. The reason I say do that first is because then you can go over here in vehicle and then you can customize this vehicle exactly how you want it by any one of these options here on the left hand side. If we just start at convenience below, you can turn off the rear occupancy alert. You can turn on the auto rear wipers like it should be. Your wireless phone charging system should be on. There's the two press lock and unlock. This is cool, you have the power lift gate, which is which is a thing, but you also have smart lift gate. So if you turn on smart lift gate and you stand behind the car, the door will open and then you can also set different heights as well. So, I mean, if you're a shorter individual, you can set different heights of how far you want that door to open. Um, so pretty neat there. Um, Let's just go into lights real quick. So you have your, your turn signal lights, you have your high beam assist, uh, all that kind of good stuff. Seats, you have the change seats position alerts, uh, easy seat access, so that's kind of cool. Um, climate, uh, climate's easy, we'll just get that down there. You don't really need to go into here, but since this is an eco vehicle, you can set some settings that'll actually save energy by running your climate um, at a little bit different power mode. So those are things to play around with. Driver assistance, some people just don't like the driver assistance. So you, you could turn off the things like the forward safety collision avoidance. You can turn off blind spot. You can turn off lane keep assist, uh, rear cross traffic detector, speed limit notifications, because you can also, um, it'll tell you what the speed limit is in areas uh, on your screen, which is kind of cool. So you can turn all that stuff on and off. So. You could definitely play around with that. Navigation, sound, device connections. I mean, you can change you know, the location of the sound and all that kind of stuff. Volume limits, connected devices. I mean, this car should be able to do with pretty much with whatever you want it to do. And uh, if it doesn't, then, you know, just let me know. So you have different theme selections, which are kind of cool. So you can switch them to like A, B, C, and D. So over here, theme B, theme C, my favorite is theme D. So that tells you the weather. So it'll mimic the weather outside. So it is a blue sky, a couple of clouds there on the left. And guess what? You have a blue sky ahead of you, a couple of clouds on the left. I don't know how it does it, but it's magic. So 
Um, what's really cool is when it's raining or snowing, the animation changes to rain or snow. I'm gonna actually leave it on there because that is my favorite. I actually wish my car had dynamic mode or theme D. Okay, scooting right along, let's get into climate. So you have dual climate control here, right here and here for driver and passenger. You can set different blower speeds right there in the center. You wanna make sure your AC is turned on. Anytime you have an amber light, that means it is on. This is a ply bridge, so you have driver only. So if I click driver only, it's gonna turn off everything on the passenger side and in the rear and only focus the climate on me, the driver. So I don't feel any difference driving right here in, in this seat, but these vents definitely are now off. So it's a way to preserve energy. Um, it's a way to be efficient. Um, so make sure you turn that back on though when you have passengers. Um, auto off, um, well, sorry, auto climate, defrosters right over there. You can sync your temperature to the driver and then you have your directionals right here so you know which way the, uh, the climate's going. Down here, you do have these kind of cool little knee vents uh, or lower vents uh, that are, are pretty cool, very useful. I like them a lot. You have your little cubby here, which just uses tension. So you can just press that button, she opens up. You have your wireless phone charger right there, USB ports, USB-C ports um, for charging. You have your heated and ventilation seats right there. Uh, you have this the cool little cup holders here, the little change holder right here. This is a hybrid, so you do have your shifter knob. You have reverse, neutral, and drive, and then you have park in the center. So if you put your foot on the brake and you go into drive, and I'm just gonna roll forward a bit. To go into park, all you do is press park. It'll say park, and then now you're parked. Not too hard, but it takes people a day or so to get used to that. Down here, you have your different drive modes. You have Eco, Sport, Snow, and Smart. You also can lock your rear wheels as well. Remember, anything that's orange means that's what it's on. Um, you do have your heated steering wheel, your auto hold, downward hill assist, electronic brake, forward parking sensors, camera. So if I press that, it's going to activate the camera and the side views. And then over here, you can change your views as well. Go into the settings there and you can change your lines and your distance warnings and all kinds of stuff too. Insanely customizable. Um, this button here, EV, H, EV, EV mode. So I'm not, it's not gonna let me do anything because I don't have any electricity in the, in the tank there. But what that button's gonna allow you to do is switch you from elect EV mode, hybrid mode, and automatic mode. I really thought that hybrid mode uh, and, and EV mode were going to be the best. And I really do think EV mode is still the best, uh, but my wife swears that automatic mode, uh, it gives her more efficiency. The car is smart. It's going to, it's going to give you, um, it's going to switch between the three systems automatically. You don't really have to do much to it, but I would recommend personally driving an EV then automatic. Um, cause when you're coasting, when you're braking, that kind of thing, it's going to send energy into the battery anyway. It's still going to use that hybrid technology when you're in EV mode. Um, but play around with it. Definitely play around with it. You have your big central cubby right here, not too shabby. And then up top, like I was saying, you have your big panoramic sunroof, uh, with a view that goes all the way back. The front partition does open as well. Uh, and then depending upon how you press it, that may open and close differently. So you can bring back just the glass, you can bring back just the partition, and you can stop it anywhere you want by just pressing the button again. So if you wanna bring it back a little bit and then press the button, it'll stop. You can also press it straight up, I believe. Nope, it it's, takes me a while to get used to it. And then you can get the back open for air. So it's all about how you press it. All right, did I cover everything? No, I didn't, uh, but I covered enough. I mean, this is, you should have a fun grasp of what this vehicle can do um, and, the, and the everyday settings and features that this vehicle comes with. Um, if I can help you find one, uh, let me know. I am in Colorado, but I can get you in touch with a shipper. We sell at MSRP. I've selling a couple to surrounding states at the moment as we speak. So um, 
definitely can do that for you. Like and subscribe on the channel if you like what you see. That definitely helps out. Uh, thanks for watching and check out the links in the description because I'll have the charging links. I'm going to have a link to the new storefront that I have open. Um, maybe some uh, weather tech mats. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that I could put in the links. So definitely check those out. And thanks for watching. And I will see you down at the dealership. All right. Thanks, guys. Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado, and today I am going to show you a little bit of a video of a new product that I am now partnered with from One Car Stereo. They are an awesome company, they have great products, and they have something that I've always wanted in my Kia. They have the ability to project wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto as well as apps like Netflix, YouTube, um, Disney Plus, like all these streaming services uh, through your car's infotainment system. So uh, it's a super great product. Uh, it's very inexpensive, especially if you use the link in this video, uh, you do get a discount for shopping through my link, uh, which is really cool. Um, but let me show you what this is. So it is a little box and it is right here and it's called a smart ai box now this smart ai box it's super small and it goes right into your usb port it works with any vehicle uh, that has wired apple carplay or wired android auto and it gives it the ability to have wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto like i was saying and it projects it right onto your car screen so i am sitting in a kia telluride and i am watching one of my other videos from youtube on the screen in the high definition uh, it works on any make any model that has a wired uh, uh that has that well basically it does not have wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto so from my understanding it works on any vehicle that does not have the wireless component which is really cool because that's the majority of kias to be honest and the majority is of hyundai's fords i mean there's there's some makes and models out there that obviously have them like the lower trim level kias have wireless apple carplay and android auto but this fifty thousand dollar telluride i'm sitting in does not so uh definitely just taking a look here and how crisp and clear the screen is um i watched netflix on my way to lunch yesterday on this thing um it is super cool now it's kind of an android system which is kind of interesting because i'm an apple guy but you just click there and you can click this little button there and go to your home screen and that's what it kind of looks like so you have netflix youtube a bunch of other things you can go to the app store here and then you can set up uh, different apps my wife set up the uh, xfinity stream app here for our cable so we can stream our dvr on here which was pretty cool um I i'm a fan i mean it's something i've always wanted it's it was very inexpensive i've always been kind of scared to buy one but now that I've partnered and partnered with One Car Audio and they were nice enough to send me this and give my customers uh, a promotion, uh, if you follow the link, you get a discount. Um, and it is definitely worth it. I, it hasn't buffered. It hasn't like lagged. There, there hasn't been anything. I'm gonna click speed uh, play there and there it is, wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, the phone that I am videotaping this on uh, has no wires attached to it. Uh, it, and then this is what's going on here. So this is definitely CarPlay, which is super, super cool. Uh, works with Android Auto as well. And to go back to car, you just hit car and there you are. <laughs> that rhymed. Um, I don't think I can play any Netflix content because of like YouTube restrictions. But as you can see, I click Netflix and there it is. Um, it just pops up. There's my little family. I'm going to pick my profile and then it will load like i said very little lagging when you first connect it like down there there is a handshake so it's going to um it's it's you're gonna feel like a little bit it takes maybe 30 45 seconds for everything to connect it connects with your um it connects with your hotspot on your phone which is pretty important and then also bluetooth so uh, it just depends upon what you're using but there's netflix and you can go in and looks kind of like it does on your TV. Uh, I play stuff, but again, it's uh, I'm not sure what the content was. That's why I was playing my own YouTube channel on YouTube. But super cool product. Definitely, if you have any questions, post them in the link below. 
um, don't forget to click through. Uh, they have they have a bunch of other things too. I mean, they have a whole suite of products. It's depending upon your vehicle and what you're needing. But this was very very cool. They were generous enough to to send me one to review, and I could not be happier. And again, I am sitting in a Kia Kia a uh, Kia Kia. I'm sitting in a Kia Twenty Four Telluride SX Prestige, and I uh, could watch Netflix if I wanted to. Uh, it'd be really cool for hybrids or EVs because you can charge uh, at a charging station and pop on, you know, a show, pop on a movie. Uh, super, super cool. I have yet to find any kind of issues with it. Like I said, no lagging, no buffering. It's very, very easy. It does a ton of things that uh, I'm still trying to scratch the surface. When you go into the App Store, because then you have like the Play Store right here, and then you would just sign in with your Gmail account. Um, they have a whole like it's your whole gmail so you you can download a whole bunch of apps that i haven't even scratched the surface with yet um like there's amazon prime i can do i mean the google calendars i mean it's just it's your it's the google app store on your car which is really really cool all right guys i just wanted to do a quick little video on this to show you what it is and what it does it is just the smart ai box it's super light comes with its own cord a usb and a usb-c cord depending upon what setup you have in your vehicle um i really just can't be more happier with this product it's something i like i said i've always wanted i have zero issues with it um and all you do is you just plug it in and then it just works and it just like I said, a little bit of a handshake, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and then you are good to go. Um, so definitely check it out, guys, and I will see you guys down at the dealership.